Hey everyone, Chris here back again with another chat with Kuzat. Today we are going to talk about Sideo and how it came into existence. So, hi Kuzat. Thanks Chris. Let's start right there. When did Sideo, or at the time Cybertech, first even originate as an idea in your mind? Yeah, um, I think because I came from a business family uh, in East Turkestan, I always wanted to do business. So uh, while working in IT, me and my wife, we were like, should I start, should we start a hot dog, hot dog stand? You know, all, you know, we tried many things, uh, just, just constantly thinking for the opportunity. I started, you know, import, export, like done really some stupid things that it didn't work out, but it's, it's okay. Um, never thought of starting a tech education company. And, uh, but it was very organic though. So here's what happened, right? As a broken immigrant, broken English, no college degree, working in IT, right? After suffering for almost four years in the United States, the most difficult time of my life. And I started working in IT. Three months later, I became the top performer in the team. So that time, I had a reflection. So what is my reflection? You know, before, I have this stereotypical, you know, in IT, you have to go to MIT, mm -hmm. Virginia Tech. You have to have computer science background. You have to have good English. You have to have good educational and technical background, good network, connection, all these things. So who am I? Like, you know, nobody. How, it's like it's right there and you're here, you know, somewhere. And it was something unachievable. And, and through all the stories I get into IT, after three months, become one of the top performers in the, in the company. And that time I realized that people like me, we are not stupid. People, are, people who is working in IT today, they're not necessarily smarter than you. Like, imagine that you're working in 7-Eleven. Do you know why it's 7-Eleven? Because it opens at 7 a.m., closes at 11 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just throwing. <laughs> so if, you, if you're a 7-Eleven worker, you go there at 7 a.m., you work until 11 p.m. And uh, I, I don't think you're dumb if you're making less money. And I don't think there are smarter, said many times. Then why, why they're achieving more? I think, you know, it's because of our choices in life that, you know, I'm going to get into like the race and immigrant stuff. You know, for example, right, you know, what do you think if an Indian kid comes to the room to, to his dad and mom's, dad, I want to become social media influencer. I want to become comedian. I want to become an artist. It's not what, is go the, well. what is the re reaction of the Indian father? Not great. He's going to beat the shit out of that kid. He's going to say three choice. Okay. A, doctor. B, engineer. C, I don't know, CEO. <laughs> D is like, we're going to kill you. Right. <laughs> so I think because of that reason, I know it's, I, I don't know, it could be, you know, inappropriate, but you know, this is what I believe. Right. So it, lots of Indian kids, Asian kids, like lots of people, somehow they end up in IT. Okay. Now, Back then, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, maybe it, wasn't, it was demand, but it was not like today. So we had this, this uh, if, if, if you ask people like uh, 10 years ago, tell me what is IT company? And they'll be like Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Google, Netflix, or whatever, the fan companies. And uh, yeah, of course, and only certain companies were IT companies, only certain companies were uh, recruiting developers, you know, DevOps people, cybersecurity engineers. Now, when you look at the companies today, and you don't, you, you lo no longer have finance companies like banks. You have fintech companies. Hmm. And Capital One says, we are not banking companies. We are, in, we are a tech company in the banking industry, in the finance industry. So they become fintech. You have healthcare tech. You have transportation tech. You have, everything becomes tech. Everything becomes tech enabled. There's no longer tech companies. Every, everybody's to exist, they need to become tech companies. So this demand all of a sudden is just like exponentially explode. So much demand. Okay, 
I think there's something called supply and demand in economy, in economy 101, minus one, whatever. <laughs> you started from the more demand, the more, like, if the supply is less, the price goes up. Same thing. So now these people are making good money because there's demand. So they made the right choice at some, time, some point, right? People like me, for example, many people, like they study music, they couldn't become Justin Bieber. Uh, what are you going to do now? Uh, you're going to play guitar in the metro? In a, you know, you learn history. I love history. But tell me a historian uh, making 120K now. Tell me, like, what are you going to do? Are you going to... You go to elementary school, you teach George Washington, like they're not going to pay you 120 for that. So it's just because these people made a right decision, whether it's conscious or not, they end up in the place that has lots of demand. That's why they make more money. So it was like pretty much where you are. So I gave this example before. It's like a gold mining. Okay. So my grandfather was a gold miner. Imagine, imagine you're mining golds and you're working so hard and you don't find golds. And you, you work 24-7, you don't find golds. You, make, you, buy, you invest more equipment, you don't find golds. Do you know why? Because there's no gold. You're digging the wrong place. Digging the right place. Being in the right place is also important. So that's, that was my kind of shock when I was there. Okay, people like me, like a dad like me, mom like my wife, this underprivileged underdogs not because they're stupid or dumb they're just working so hard in the 7-eleven in the kitchens of a, a, a restaurant washing dishes so hard they just don't know this opportunity exists or they don't know they could do it so it was not a business idea it was just like i legitimately felt bad for people and i would start like because i used to sell cars so what I did is I used my car sales like uh, experience kind of, it was like unintentional. I'll give you an example. I go to a restaurant, now I can afford a, you know, a fine dining restaurant. I can take my wife, spend a 50 bucks for dinner. <laughs> so I see, when I see a nice waiter, like with great attitude, smiling, smart, like memorizing all the like, how do you, mem if you can memorize this f crazy menus, I don't think you cannot write, you can't code. You know what I'm saying? It is same. So I see this guy is like, like I'm ordering all these things. He's not writing it down. I was like, don't you have to write it down? He's like, no, I, I got it. You think this guy cannot code? You gotta be crazy. He's gonna be like, he's gonna kick ass when he gets into it. So I see hardworking, smiling, good attitude people. And automatically I was just like, hey, listen, you seem like a nice guy. <laughs> Let me tell you something. So I, I would like talk like 10, 15 minutes to this guy, just try to convince that he can get into IT through the bootcamp. Initially, that was that. I was just encouraging others to take bootcamps, study coding, go to Udemy, whatever. And uh, especially in the Uyghur community, I started doing that. And lots of people started calling me, hey, Kuzat, I have questions. Hey, Kuzat, can you teach me that? You know. So at some point, we had to book a library or the weekend and uh, they would ask me questions I would answer you know things like that I was just mentoring for free because I thought that if I do that their pain that I, the pain that I have will be reduced I was like probably I was just helping myself because I just felt like I don't want others to suffer so teaching all the way through for many years and at some point, it was just uh, too many like requests that people want to learn from me, right? too much demand. And it would, came to the point that I can't no longer do it for free because like, I know as soon as I got out of work, while I was working in Herndon with my co-founder, my phone starts ringing and people start asking me questions. And uh, at that time, I thought, you know, I wanted to do business. I tried everything. It didn't work out. I'm helping these people for free and uh, one at a time. And it became like very inefficient. You know, why don't we just like put like 20 people in the same room so we can teach them. And now it's sustainable. Now I don't have to do it for free anyway. I want to do business. But what about that? You know, so that was the initial idea. It's not like I want to make money in the beginning. I literally wanted to help people. 
So it, it was an organic way to end up with the conclusion of because of too many requests, maybe I should start a coding bootcamp. And that's how the idea started forming in that time.